Okay, check this out, guys. The more we, you know, you think, oh, this love thing is squishy, whichever. No, look, love is a power. God's love for us is a supernatural weapon. Okay, so I, I just saw somebody chat in and I lost your name. I'm sorry, honey. But you said, um, gosh, I've been through so much battle, so much intense warfare, so many issues that my love has grown cold. You know, it's like we start to feel like, well, if God really loved us, he'd get me out of this. But instead of feeling like that, you need to turn and say, no, you know what I need to do? I need to meditate on how much God loves me because as Carrick said, and as the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. The more, and, and the torment that goes with it, the more you began to meditate on God's love, get all the scriptures about God's love, decree those scriptures about God's love, you actually will start winning the warfare. You'll actually yes. start casting out these spirits. You know, Carrick, uh, Raquel, and Raquel, I want you to comment on this too. Um, there's a couple of scriptures in the Bible that are so powerful that actually indicate that the love of God is deliverance power. I'll just read one, one to you. This is Psalm 1850. It says, great deliverances and triumphs gives he to his king. He shows mercy and steadfast love to his anointed to David and his offspring forever. You see, one of the ways God shows his steadfast love, guys, is by giving you great deliverances. His love is a deliverance power. It casts out fear and the torment that comes with it. We need to start meditating on the love of God. What, what do you think about that, Raquel? I know you do that yourself. I do, and I absolutely we have to. We have to meditate on and no, we have to know that God loves us. It's really important, like we've been mentioning here, to, um, it enables you to, to say no to fear. Come on. And to, again, cast the spirit of fear out of the, out, out of the situation and not allow, allow to have a driver's seat in your life. Come and on. so you have to know and believe and yield to, right? You have to yield to the truth that is God is love and he loves you and he is for you mm. and that he is fighting for you, that he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you and that he can do all things. Uh, we, we sing the song in church, God can do anything but fail. He will not fail in this area of your life. He won't fail you, but you have to believe that he loves you first. Otherwise, you're going to yield to the lies of the enemy. And wherever you yield, whichever direction you yield to, that's what you're going to see um, happen. So you don't want to put your faith or your belief in the enemy's lies. You have to trust God. And what you'll find is that um, you'll see it. You'll see God perform his word. We'll see him do the miracles. You'll see him, you'll see the growth and the progress. You'll see and notice that your mentality is changing and it is okay if it is a slow process. Time is a part of the equation and he'll teach us how to be patient. He'll teach you about seed time and, and harvest, the godly law of seed time and harvest. And so you'll see him work. And that's that's good. That's good. That's what you that's what you want to see. So then you just need to be consistent. You don't good word. You don't you you just don't let go of what it is that you do to be victorious it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle and um and when as you choose to do that consistently and sometimes in the beginning if you're new to this you might have to do it like all day and that's normal that's normal if 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 you are finding yourself having to remind yourself that god loves you and god's for you um multiple times a day a, a day that's okay. Uh, you have to cast down the wicked imaginations um, and replace it with the word of God. You you acknowledge and say no to the lie and replace it with the truth. And man. in time, you won't do. You know, it. You'll grow in time, and and. Um, 
We have to take every thought captive. Yeah, you do. And you have to take everyone. That's the thing. You don't don't let it lay a nest in your yeah. head. What did Dad Hagen say? Lay eggs in the nest. Yeah. You have to take every thought captive yeah. and mm-hmm. replace it with the word of God. And Amen. Um, that's what we all have to do. We yeah. do, guys. We all have to do that. Look, I'm going to put a really good, healthy challenge up to you. Go into a, one of your Bible apps and put in the word love or steadfast love. I like going to the Amplified and putting in love first and then steadfast love because there's amazing scriptures about how God even makes them rich that love him. And, you know, the deliverance scriptures and how he builds a divine canopy of, uh, canopy of protection and love over you. So we need to take those scriptures. We need to put them in our notes, copy and paste them and start decreeing them every day. You've got to start believing the truth. When you were still a sinner, God loved you and Jesus yeah. died for you. When you were still yet a sinner, that's how much, much God loves you. We yeah. need to get this in us because we're losing the battle because we don't think God wants to do it for us. We don't think we deserve it. We, we, we think we're, you know, we're too unclean to get it. You know, guys, I, I can remember doing that myself. I made a little list of love scriptures. Yes. And because what happened was, is I had this pain in my neck for, I don't know how long, for 20 years, I think. And I'm a deliverance and healing minister. Yes. And finally, one day I said, God, why do I have this pain in my neck? He goes, because you're afraid. I said, I'm sorry. I went to prison. Uh, I collect different biker clubs. I, you know, uh, did collections on the street. I, I'm not afraid, God. He goes, yes, you are. And I said, okay, what am I afraid of? He said, you're afraid of making the wrong decisions that might lead the ministry in a wrong direction. You're afraid of letting down your employees by not being able to bring home the bacon and pay their paychecks. You're afraid that you might disappoint me, God. You're afraid of all those things. He said, and perfect love casts out fear. He said, I want you to meditate on the scriptures. So I would, I would get my list, guys. And I would decree those scriptures over myself every day. And at, and that, at the end of a couple of days, I finally said, you know what, fear and torment, you come out of my neck. And man, that pain left. Love is so much more powerful than we know. Yes. Yeah, I know you've got more word on that. Carrick, fill us in. You can't let the enemy's attacks make you question God's care for you. Because that's exactly what happened in Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 5. After Jesus talked on the parable of the soul, which is one of the most important parables in the Bible, Jesus fell asleep. He's been teaching all day. They, he said, let's go to the other side. He's on the boat. And what happens? All of a sudden, a storm. Now, when you read this in Mark chapter 4, really read it. Because it didn't say it began to rain. It didn't say those things. And it's all of a sudden there was a windstorm. It's an invisible storm. And then it says the waves beat into the boat so that now it was full. Now, that's a miracle. A lot of times people miss the miracle because of the drama around them. The boat should have sank already. The miracle was it was still going to the other side. So wow. if you're in a mess right now, don't miss the miracle. You're mm-hmm. still going to the other side because wow. that's what you promised. And so while the boat is filled with water, the disciples are acting like a lot of us. They're panicking. And so they go to Jesus and they didn't just shake him awake. That word in Greek means it was like a useful resurrection. They shook him hard mm-hmm. and yanked him up. And notice what they said. It says, Lord, don't you care that we are about to die? This invisible storm, the waves beat on the boat. And the word in the Greek implies that it was an entity. So we know this was a storm stirred up by the devil. They are questioning God's care for them because of the storm. And what did Jesus do? He got up and it says he rebuked the wind because I was a source. And then he told the sea, that's what the word peace means. It means hush, calm down. And as soon as it says the sea became as still as. And then Jesus looked at him and says, where was your faith? Meaning Jesus fully expected the disciples to handle that storm. Wow. Now, we know that storm was stirred up by the demoniacs in uh, Mark chapter 5. But yep. what I want you to know today is don't let the storm caused by the enemy cause you to question the care of God. He it's loves you. Really, he really cares good. for you. He will take care of you and you will have the victory. Why? He loves you. Yeah. So in the midst of the storm, don't lose sight on the fact that God loves you. Why is he going to deliver you? Because he loves you. Why is he going to provide for you? Because he loves you. Why is he going to heal you? Because he loves you. Why is he going to bring your kids back home? Because he loves you. Why is he going to make your family whole? Because he loves you. Why is he going to make things right? Because he loves you. The basis for our belief and the miraculous has to be God loves us. And he enjoys doing miracles, signs, and wonders for his children. 
This is powerful. I hope you've shared the broadcast and I hope you're paying attention because the, the power of God's perfected love. He, yeah. His love is perfect. There's no motive or evil or, you know, turning or changing his mind. Oh, I changed my mind today. I don't love you anymore. That, like how human beings do. This is a powerful word. This alone can bring you deliverance. This alone can bring you hope. This alone can bring you breakthrough. I'm receiving it. Amen. I've been through massive storms lately. I'm receiving it. That the truth is that God is loves me and he's going to get me to the other side. <laughs> Even in the midst of this storm, he's going to get me to the other side. I want you to please to minister out of that. And then we're going to go into um, looking at this video so we can minister out of that also. But can you minister out of that place? where you're literally decreeing and breaking off doubt of God's love, or releasing God's love, um, using it as a weapon, bringing assurance through your decrees and your prayers. I cut you yeah. loose. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we take our place in the authority of Jesus, and we come against every harassing and lying spirit that said you are not worthy of being loved, that has told you that no one loves you and no one ever loved you. I cancel those words. And I uproot it from you. You are worthy to be loved because Jesus shed his blood for you. And that made you worthy of God's best. And so we come against that lie. We come against that discouragement. We come against that attack of the enemy trying to make you discount God's love. Because in the midst of the storm, Satan assigns lying spirits to get you off track. So we tell those lying spirits, shut down your mouth Jesus, now. Right now. And in the authority of Jesus, we bind you and we command you to leave God's children alone. God. Yes, and my Jesus. Father, I pray that you will cause an awareness of your presence and of your love to sweep them right now. Spirit, soul, and body. May the love of God be poured out into their hearts in overflowing measure because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love. And you gave us the Holy Spirit because you love us. And so we pray for your love because you are love to flow into their lives in an unprecedented way where they can sense your love, know that they're love, believe in your love, and grow in your love right now. May they be filled to overflowing with the love of God. In Raquel, Jesus. will you minister too, please? Absolutely. I just said... Uh, I just want to speak on joy for a moment, if that's okay. Yes. Uh, so the Lord's plan is for you to get through each and every, because we're going to, there's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulations, there's going to be storms, but not only will you make it through on the other side, but the plan is in the meantime for you to be in a place of rest and for there to be joy. The enemy is a defeated foe. He is already lost. The victory that's yours, we share in Christ's victory. So you are victorious. You're going to see the word of God uh, uh, in, in that situation. Uh, but when the Lord asks you, and we have to choose this, to, to, to choose joy, when the Lord asks you to not worry, it's really important that we are trusting him, trusting his love and being obedient in those moments because the enemy doesn't have anything that can stand up against the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In So there's nothing that he has that can trump the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Thank so the enemy cannot... He, at first, we already know he's a defeated foe. Also, there's no weapon that he has that will ever prosper against you, child of God. And when you are full of joy, when you are choosing to cast your cares on the Lord, knowing that he cares for you, um, and when you allow the Lord to teach you how to rest, that's, first of all, all fighting the good fight of faith. But also the enemy doesn't have anything that can stand up against it. Yes, God. So when we hear and when we read that the joy of the Lord is our strength, understand that's how you fight. That's how you fight and win and fight well. Jesus. 
That's how you fight. See yourself on the other side of it. Bring other people out of it and also prosper in your soul all at the same time. Yes, God. So when you are tempted, because it's a temptation to complain and to worry and to talk about all the things that the enemy is doing in this trial or in this situation, stop. Don't do that. (laughs) instead by faith make the choice to praise and worship God instead by faith make the choice to say what it is that God has said to you for what you see in the word of God and instead by faith you make the choice to choose joy it doesn't matter what is going on around you all of that's going to change this too shall pass it's all going to change Right. And Thank you. you can make this choice. The Holy Spirit will help you make this choice. And he'll, because some of you, I know you're like, right now you're saying, you're saying to yourself, it's too difficult. I can't make the choice. It's too difficult for me to choose joy. But see, the Lord is going to help you by Amen. changing your mentality. Amen. And so each and every day that you walk with him, you are thinking differently. And then you will find yourself in a place where you do it. All, you do it without even thinking to do it. Now your default is joy where you're able to mm. shut down mm. um, what, the, you know, uh, worry and, and instead choose joy by singing songs of praise, right? By singing songs of worship. And even thanking. I, I mean, I've noticed that, <clears throat> guys, I went on a Thanksgiving fest in December because things were so hectic, like beyond anything I'd ever dealt with. And <laughs> trust me, I've dealt with a lot. And I just started going, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank yeah. you, God. I, I'm going to try to remind myself now to go even back to that, where I'm just... Yeah programming my natural response to be, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I worship you, God. I give you the honor, God. I give you the praise, God. That will, that will cause, that's a weapon. That, that will is. cause a breaking. <laughs> it is, right? It's a total yeah. weapon. That will cause a breaking of that assignment. Uh, complaining will only increase the assignment, whereas thanking him will break the assignment. I'm preaching to myself right now. I'm preaching to myself right now. 